What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Stand Tall. It's October 4th, and we are in the Art of War, Chapter 9. Here we go. 19. When he keeps aloof and tries to provoke a battle, he is anxious for the other side to advance. 20. If his place of encampment is of easy access, he is tendering a bait. 21. Movement among the trees of a forest shows that the enemy is advancing. The appearance of a number of screens in the midst of th thick grass means the enemy wants to make us suspicious. A number of screens. You know, I mean, back then that meant one thing. Today that could mean another thing as far as screens are concerned. I love how the um, <clears throat> black and white really shows the blemishes. 22. The rising of birds in their flight is the sign of an ambuscade. Startled beasts indicate that a sudden attack is coming. I mean, that is a classic trope in a lot of movies and things like that. Um, you know, flying out of the bushes because a predator approaches. And we'll end on 23. When there is dust rising in a high column, it is the sign of chariots advancing. When the dust is low but spread over a wide area, it betokens the approach of infantry. When it branches out in different directions, it shows that parties have been sent to collect firewood. A few clouds of dust moving to and fro signify that the army is encamping. So just studying your own patterns and the things that happen because of what you do can be studied. When you're riding in on chariots, you can see what kind of dust is being formed. When you're commanding an infantry, and so you gain these experiences, and through these experiences, you're thus able to better make decisions about what the other people are doing. So let's go over to the alternate translation. Master Sun says, when the trees move, the enemy is coming. When there are many blinds in the undergrowth, it is misdirection. So Dumu follows this up with, the idea of making many blinds in the underbush is to make you think that there might be bushwhackers hidden behind them. Bushwhackers. Master Sun says, if birds start up, there are ambushers there. If the animals are frightened, there are attackers there. If dust rises high and sharp, vehicles are coming. If it is low and wide, foot soldiers are coming. Scattered wisps of smoke indicate woodcutters. Relatively small amounts of dust coming and going indicate setting up camp. Mei Yaochen reflects on this, that light troops set up camp, so the dust raised by their comings and goings is relatively little. Very insightful. Um, but I think a lot of those raise good questions, you know, as far as positioning and awareness and utilizing our own experiences to... to better position ourselves in the world through feedback. So uh, let's go over to the Daily Stoic, Ryan Holiday, and Stephen Hanselman. October 4th, all for one and one for all. That which isn't good for the hive isn't good for the bee. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 6.54. This is true. Inherent in the Stoic concept of sympathia is the notion of an interconnected cosmos in which everything in the universe is part of the larger whole. I like this. Marcus Aurelius was one of the first writers to articulate the no notion of cosmopolitanism, saying that he was a citizen of the world, not just Rome. The idea that you're a bee in the hive is a reminder of this perspective. Marcus even states that the reverse of that idea later in his meditations, just so he doesn't forget. That which doesn't harm the community can't harm the individual. Just because something is bad for you doesn't mean it's bad for everyone. Just because something is good for you definitely doesn't mean it's good for everyone. Think of the hedge fund managers who bet massively against the economy. They profited by rooting for essentially everyone and everything else to fail. Is that what you want to be? A good Stoic understands that proper impulses and the right actions that arise from them naturally carry the good of the whole, which is the wise person's only good. Conversely, good and wise actions by the whole are what's good for the individual. So there's this other book that I'm reading. It's actually called, you know, the, so you've got The Madness of Crowds is a book that's really well known. But then you've got a uh, a good book that I like called The uh, the Wisdom of Crowds. Um, and it's kind of along these lines, I guess. But I think that, you know, just because something is good for you doesn't mean it's good for everyone. And, like, that's okay if if it's good for you, though, but it's not good for other people, don't force it on other people. You know, that's where the uh, the ethics and the morality of the hedge funds come in. You know, that's why mutual funds can't do that. And that's why, you know, I mean, me as a financial advisor, you know, we can't 
do a lot of that stuff. I mean, unless the individual investor wants to, but you know, that's not really a strategy that, that I focus on. You know, we might take advantage of market, uh, market timings in certain ways or trend investing is the better word for it. Um, but being a citizen of the world is something that I think America is going to have to come to terms with, uh, um, for better or worse, and some of us are going to change faster than others, and others are not, and that's just going to be how it is. And I think that, based on what we've learned from Sun Tzu, is you know we can check out the dust that we're creating around ourselves, uh, or or maybe look at some of the trends and the happenings of of other countries around the world, and and kind of give us some perspective so as we keep standing tall let's think about that and we'll see you guys on the next one